I can't tell if I'm getting worse or getting better, but uh, my friend is in McDonald's right now. We both obviously were in McDonald's. I was just in McDonald's and I had to leave while they were ordering food because I felt like I was gonna cry. Like, I don't wanna eat anything right now. I really just don't wanna eat anything. And I said, like, get me a hash brown, you know, maybe get me two and like, we'll go from there. But I legit, I have been eating normally for the past, like, I don't know, I can't remember, it's been that long. Um, it's not been like months, but for the past two to three weeks, I've been eating three meals a day um, and just eating whatever I want to, eating junk food, eating literally whatever I want to. Um, and, sorry, I'm just like still emotional. <laughs> Looking at him punch in, cause you know they have the mobile kiosks. Looking at him punch in the foods looking at him like looking at the food and thinking about it even if it wasn't the other food was not for me but looking at all the food on the menu and then seeing the hash browns like when he did select them and then being like fuck i need to now eat the hash brown why didn't i just say because like it's a very good thing that like he said that you know I, I think it's a good thing i don't know um that like i have to eat something because i know i do have to eat something i haven't eaten anything since yesterday morning sorry not, not sure i'm supposed to say that trigger warning it's too late now fuck um well y'all should pay attention to the warnings in the beginning of this video <laughs> point being is that like i started just like it all started to just rush to my head and my thoughts i was like honing in on the fact that the mcdonald's fucking hash browns are greasy as fuck and i just thought about the grease melting in my mouth and i thought about how disgusting that is and how disgusting i am and like i won't go into any more details because i feel like this is very triggering um it just made me feel really bad and now i'm in the car so <laughs> here's that also i look disgusting i have not like i've showered but i have not done like facial cleaning i'm sweating it's hot as hell in atlanta it's like 90 something degrees today my hair like look at my hair the curls are not defined it's just all fluffy let me get my sh i'm not depressed anymore so yay but like i was really fighting for my life in that mcdonald's and it looks like it too happy hump day Y'all, he got in the car with the food and I just feel like I'm about to fucking cry. <laughs> I'm a freak. What's wrong with me? Obviously, we know what's wrong with me, but like... Hey, Nicki Minaj saying about, saying about it in a good way. You're an F-R-E-A-K. Yeah, yeah. No one likes a freak. <laughs> okay, so y'all, I'm fine now. <laughs> but that's a very good example of... I don't even, I know what to call it, but the word is escaping me. Um anxiety attacks it's not a panic attack and anxiety attacks technically aren't even marked by the it's a whole like fucked up thing but extreme anxiety in the sense that like it just kind of built and then was released but not a panic attack because i was not dying panic attacks i like literally have no idea what's going on and i can't like like i think i'm dying for real for real um and then i'm like oh wait no i'm not but anxiety attacks in the sense that um it's not also it's not quite re-experiencing either and it's not a flashback so i would just say anxiety attack that was in terms of like with food but like i'm fine now <laughs> but that's what's sucky about it is that in the moment like i literally did not think i was dying but i was like this fucking sucks so um i've been having a lot of those and that was kind of a mild one the worst ones actually do make me cry um and sometimes you know i like cower on the floor or i start screaming or like i have some weird reaction and everyone's kind of just like what the fuck well i try not to have them in public but it has happened sometimes extremely in public and that's really embarrassing the point being is that my edmr therapy is supposed to help with that but guess what i learned or what i've been going through with the edmr is that you can't really do emdr so i've been saying edmr it's em eye movement rapid desensitization reprocessing bullshit um beep, 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 beep. you can wait sorry y'all i'm parking and trying not to hit my car um it's supposed to help with all of that in terms of me reprocessing memories or triggers but you can't really do the therapy until you're ready so what does that mean essentially number one i need two different therapists because the therapist for EMDR is just for EMDR. 
and you can't really do EMDR, think about it, you can't do that type of therapy if you're having triggers to things, if you're not like in a stable mindset, if you're basically anything like I am now, you can't do the therapy because the therapy's intense. <laughs> and it's literally pulling repressed and undealt with emotions and triggers and trauma, like the shit that's really bad, the stuff that's making me have all these reactions, it's pulling that out and it's helping you it's more complicated than that, and I just simplified it in a really bad way. The point is, is that my life is chaotic. So, when do you start processing? I'm tired. When do you start processing traumatic memories, or when can I start the therapy that's supposed to help me with my complex PTSD if my life is chaotic and I literally have no stable times? I exaggerate that because I have started it. Fucking sucks. It's great. It sucks. It's great. It sucks. It's like, it's just hard. And I leave the sessions feeling like I was just in a workout class emotionally. But I've only, I've been seeing this person since May and I've only had like three sessions. So, <laughs> and within those sessions, sorry, I'm getting to the point. Y'all know I ran. Um, the point is, is that even without me having chaos in my life or not being 100% okay or there being other external things that are happening around me that I need to deal with first, EMDR, regardless of that, is a lot of preparation work, which is what I've learned. So you're probably like wondering like, what the hell are you preparing for? Like, is this like a Captain America? Like they enter a, like it, literally that's what it sounds like. <laughs> it sounds like they have to prepare my body for the reprocessing and like therapeutic, like it sounds very mystical and weird because it is mystical and weird. And I'm really just wondering what the actual therapy is like because I haven't actually started the actual therapy. Does that make it all any sense? Um, like they're preparing my body to deal with the trauma that is gonna come up. Because if you've watched my other videos when I was in a hospitalization like day program thing for my body dysmorphia, anorexia, I was freaking the fuck out. I was having trauma responses. I was freaking the fuck out and no one knew what to do besides say, go take, go take a walk. And I was like, bitch, go take a walk. I'm literally about to run up out of here and there are no guards. It's not a secured, like, secured facility. Like, bitch, I will run up out of here and never come back. And that's basically what happened. <laughs> Except I calmly drove out and then left. But like, y'all can't stop me. <laughs> that's literally what it felt like. So I say all that to say, I need this therapy apparently, it's what they say, because it helps with complex PTSD and it helps with post, like it helps with the trauma, like severe trauma, it helps with that. It helps your body deal with that, to confront it, pull it out of your mind and your subconscious and everything from the past and put it on the table in a safe way. A safe way being that it's not all at once, it doesn't come out like vomit and it's not like giving you reactions. And that will apparently, well, I don't know yet because I haven't done it, apparently will solve my problems. But I can't do that until, um, well, you might notice that I'm just walking around in circles. Um, this helps me think and calms me, surprisingly. I can't do all of that. I can't do what's gonna help me. I can't do my solution. Because number one, there is currently things happening in my life. Like maybe if I had bazillion dollars and I was on a beach in Fiji and I could just take two years off of my life and chill on the beach in Fiji with no problems, no social problems, no money problems, no professional problems, no problems, then yeah, totally can do that. But like every week it feels like there's something that's triggering me or something that happened or something that's happening that's preventing me from essentially doing this EMDR therapy. Like, I can't go into, I don't know how to explain it. I feel like this sounds so movie-like, but I can't go into like the state of pulling the trauma out if I'm currently traumatized or currently having rather, sorry, currently having a trauma reaction to something else. Like I'm walking into my sessions with my therapist, like, bro, I'm freaking the fuck out. Oh my God, it's fucking crazy. Why would I want to talk about, or how could I possibly go into a state that's calm and ready for the other shit? So, uh, I mean, it's, I'm trusting the process, I'm trusting the process, I'm trusting the process, but like, bitch. <sighs> this shit was supposed to be done in six months, and that's the time frame that I magically made up. No one told me that. The doctor didn't tell me that. Like, I didn't even get that from any reputable source. I just made it up. 
<laughs> but I was hoping to be done with this by the end of the year. I've barely scratched the surface, barely scratched the surface. So <sighs> trust the process, 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 right? I guess. <laughs>